Okay, so here's our video on heat transfer notes. So if you haven't opened up your Google Classroom, go find your heat transfer notes here and open up your Cornell notes. And the slides are already here, and of course I'll be attaching this video there as well. Okay, and you're gonna put a, it on page 68 of your notebook, and please make sure that you are doing highlights and your summary at the end. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so heat transfer, okay? So we're gonna talk about different heat transfer, okay? That happens, okay, in the world. So we're gonna talk about a few different ones here, okay? And so let's go ahead and get started. Sorry, let's go ahead and get our whole thing in here, okay? All right, so let's get started. All right, so our essential question here for this one is how is heat transferred in phase changes? So at the end, we're gonna equate it, but we're really gonna stick with water. So this is our essential question and we'll talk about those phase changes um, at, towards the end. All right, one is radiation. And radiation, as you did in your reading, it transfer from e EM waves, so electromagnetic waves, which we talked about before. And the most common one um, for radiation is from the sun to the earth. So earth transfers its energy um, through in heat and energy through what we call radiation, okay? Conduction. Conduction is the direct transfer between objects in direct contact with each other. So what does that look like? It is just like you see here. So a candle, and you see this in this Desmos, transfers its heat here and its energy to the stick or the metal poker and then to your hand. So this is what we call conduction. So conduction is a direct contact. You could also say like putting a spoon in a boiling a pan of boiling water. It's conducting that heat to the spoon, okay? Convection, so convection is energy transferred from particle movement in liquids or gases. This is really what we are going to actually deal with here. So we're gonna deal with a lot with going from um, solids to liquids to gases, okay? We just learned a bunch of different stuff about gases. So you can see convection, it, you might even have a convection oven there at home. But what it does is it transfers the heat here to the tea kettle and then the tea kettle will transfer it to this liquid. And so as the liquids, as we know, speed up, they get higher temperature because of that kinetic energy, right? Temperature is a measurement of kinetic energy. So as they get to the top, they kind of cool down, they come back down to the bottom, pick up that heat and rise right back to the top. And we'll see a um, example of all of this, of how why heat rises, and we're gonna use it with density and how fast they're moving. All right, so there are three types of heat transfer, and this picture will do all three. And so we have radiation, just like the hands are getting the heat from the fire to their hands through radiation. We have conduction of the fire to the pot because they are actually touching. And then we have convection here in the pot as it's speeding up those molecules and boiling off into steam. Okay, the first law of thermodynamics that we always um, are going to be part of is the law of conservation of energy. What does that mean? The total energy remains constant or is conserved. That means only energy is transferred. You cannot create and you cannot destroy energy. It goes somewhere. And I know you've talked about this in biology and probably in seventh and eighth grade science. This is another concept here as we're talking about molecules and how they speed up with that kinetic energy. Whatever energy is put into the system comes out of the system, okay? So it's in a system and it's surrounding. So like you could say that something is heating up like a fire, right? And it has a certain amount of energy that it's releasing, okay? Some of it goes to your hands and then some of it goes to your surroundings, but all of that energy that is used in burning that wood goes somewhere. It does not just disappear, okay? So there are two different, um, types of reactions we're gonna talk about here in chemistry. And we're actually gonna talk about these throughout the entire year. But this is your first kind of um, 
how could you say introduction into this? So the first one is what we call exothermic. Notice the EX, exit exothermic. This gives off heat. So just like a fire, that is an exothermic reaction. You can feel that heat coming off, um, heat and energy, okay? And the object's temperature decreases. So when it's burning a fire, crazy thing to think about, but the temperature of the wood, if you think about it as it goes to coals, is actually just decreasing because it's pushing that energy out into the world. But the environmental, so what is on the outside temperature, actually increases. So the other one is endothermic. So exit, exothermic, endothermic, in. So now the energy is going to go in. So it takes in heat or energy and the object temperature increases, okay? And the environmental temperature decreases, okay? So things get cold, kind of like Okay, I'm gonna start thinking about freezing, right? A freezing ice, okay? So what it happens is, well, not freezing, that's an exothermic, sorry. I'm gonna say going to a gas. So what's happening is it, uh, as you're boiling that water, okay, in the pot, what's happening is the, the water is increasing in temperature. And so it's increasing, sucking in the energy from the stove, it's increasing and then what it does is it's actually decreasing the actual temperature of the pot. So that's why the pot doesn't get too hot and melt is because the, the heat and energy is actually coming up and being transferred into the water. And so that the pot decreases, but yet it still has a constant coming from the um, stove, but the pot is actually decreasing in temperature as the water actually removes the heat and takes it to turn into steam, okay? So that's an endothermic. So you'll see that the object's temperature actually increases and the environmental temperature will decrease. And these are very hard concepts. We will do an ed puzzle next time you're in class um, to go ahead and try to figure these out, okay? Now, we're gonna go back with all of our stuff with states of matter, okay? So remember states of matter with solids, we have liquids and we have gases, okay? And we're gonna really focus on water. So we're gonna focus on ice, water, and vapor, okay? And there's a couple points that you may see me abbreviate um, that I'm gonna talk about. The melting point, so just like ice, the melting point or the temperature where it melts is where it turns from ice to liquid. And the boiling point is when it starts steaming. So that's where it starts boiling and then it starts turning to steam. So going from a liquid to a steam. And then we have what we call the freezing point and that is just what it says. Just like if we think about um, water is we go from liquid water and we get it down to a temperature where it finally starts turning into ice. And then we have the condensation point and that is where it goes back from a gas back down to a liquid. So that is called condensation. So we call that temperature a condensation point, okay? For example, and this is the one that we're really gonna work in and on the test is the only one we're gonna ask you the questions with, is ice liquid to vapor, okay? Zero degrees Celsius is the melting point and the freezing point. So what the heck does that mean? How can they be at the same temperature? Well, when we're changing phases, we can go forward where we can go faster with the molecules or we can go backwards and go slower with the molecules. So we could be at zero degrees Celsius if I have a solid piece of ice. Then as it starts melting or changing to liquid, I am at zero degrees Celsius. If I put that directly back into the freezer at that point, because now we're still at zero degrees Celsius, it'll start freezing because now it's starting to drop even more. So you can, at zero degrees Celsius water, you can either melt or you can freeze. You can go forward and you'll look at the graph in a minute or you can go backwards. And then the other point, again, the boiling point and the condensation point is at 100 degrees Celsius. So we, at that point, at 100 degrees Celsius, when you're at that point of temperature, it can either go from a liquid to a gas or a gas to a liquid. Okay, it can go forward, faster molecules, or go backwards to slower molecules. And this is a graph of what we see with ice, okay? 
And so here we are in a solid and we are down below the melting point or the freezing point. This is, remember melting point, freezing point are the same thing, same point. So down below this is where we're very slow and we are at a solid. So all of this would be a solid, but as we start heating up, okay, until we reach that zero degree Celsius, that melting point or melting point or freezing point, we do not change a single phase. So um, you'll see um, as we did in our ice demo, if you think about it, as it sat in your hand, it wasn't changing until you hit zero degrees Celsius. And because we were adding energy in and going up in temperature, that's why it started melting. If it was liquid in a freezer, once it hit zero degrees Celsius and it would be over here, that's when it'd start actually freezing and it wouldn't start dropping in temperature actually until it got all the way to being a solid, okay? And we call this point, or the amount of heat or energy we have to put into this, we call this the heat of fusion, okay? And this is for any substance. So this is when we have to put this much heat in to go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid. Either way we go, that is called the heat of fusion. And notice, once we hit that zero degrees Celsius, it actually stays constant. So when we're changing phases, when we're going from a solid to a liquid, that is where the temperature does not change. So you can even try this at home if you have a thermometer. The temperature will not change until the phase change is completely done. So then once we hit a complete liquid, then what we will do is it'll start heating up again. And it'll heat up to that 100 degrees Celsius point. Once we hit to the 100 degrees Celsius, we call that the heat of vaporization. That's how much energy and heat we had to get in to actually start watching it turn from a liquid to gas. So while it is turning from a liquid to a gas, it will not change temperature. This whole time, it is at 100 degrees Celsius until every molecule is switched over to a gas. And then it will start heating up again, okay? So this is what we call a phase change graph. During a phase change, if we're going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid, the temperature of it does not change, okay? So here's a little kind of verbal words to wrap this kind of idea up. When a substance melts, freezes, boils, or condenses, the temperature remains constant in the phase change. So while it's in that phase change, the temperature never changes, okay? Instead, but we're still adding energy, Mrs. V. How the heck does that work? Well, what's happening is that energy is actually going in and is used to break the bonds during those points, okay? Not raise the temperature. So we're not putting, that energy is all used to make the bonds break. So depending on how much energy you put in, it would be a short amount of time, a long amount of time for it to go through that phase change. But there's a certain amount of energy you have to put in, and you'll see what that's called, per gram, per gram of substance to get it to go completely to that phase change, okay? All right, so what I want you to do is go back and process your notes. You're gonna highlight important parts of your notes. You're gonna write any questions in the left column. You're gonna make connections to your notes. You can put those in the left column. And write a three to five sentence summary. And then please make sure you're completing these because when we come back to class, we have a couple of things based on these notes. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay.